And the most historic trade deadline in terms of moves that we've seen in the NFL could not pass without the Miami Dolphins making a move. They send out yet another first round pick and they have the first round picks to send for pass rusher Bradley Chubb with the Broncos in a deal that also involves Chase Edmonds and day three picks. And they brought the band back together with Mike McDaniels and Jeff Wilson running back from the 49ers. They love stars in Miami. So who better to talk with about this than our star with the Miami Dolphins, Locked On Dolphins host, Kyle Krabs. And, and Kyle, this is now, they got this haul for Trey Lance, three first round picks, Jalen Waddell, Tyree Kill, and Bradley Chubb. What hole does Bradley Chubb fill for this Miami team? I, I think the biggest thing that the Dolphins are going to be looking for from Bradley Chubb is a complimentary pass rusher off the edge to Jalen Phillips, uh, one of the, the first round picks from the 2021 draft who had nine sacks as a rookie. He's been phenomenal this year. He's top 10 in ESPN's pass rush win rate. He's top 10 in PFF credited pressures across the, the uh, entire NFL. But the rest of the rush group for Miami, and they've endured a lot of injuries in the secondary through the first half of the season. It's made them change the DNA of how they call a defense and how they play it's a lot more zone heavy than what we're used to seeing from this team. And as a result, you got to have guys who can win organically up front and feel like you can rush four players and get home. It was, are they going to go out and get another corner? Do you believe Byron Jones, who's on the PUP, is going to be back? Well, the messaging has been consistent. They believe at some point they will get Byron Jones back. And that's what's pretty exciting is if and when he does come back, this front that is now much more tailored to play zone defense now you can play man behind that as well. And it really gives you the chance to not be so blitz dependent to get pressure on opposing quarterbacks, which this Dolphins team has been, but that takes bodies out of zone coverage. And therefore there's easier throws for quarterbacks to find and avoid those pressure situations. Yeah. The Dolphins have a pressured opposing quarterbacks, 22% of dropbacks this season, according to ESPN stats and info, that was the fourth lowest rate in the NFL. So, Offensively, we've seen what this team can do when when they allow their playmakers to go to work. Tyree Kill on a historic pace this mm -hmm. season. Um, but the defense, as you mentioned, has had some issues with fit, with trying to find the perfect way to play. What kind of floor raiser and ceiling raiser can Bradley Chubb be? How much better can they be with him in the fold? Yeah, I think at a minimum, he's another very good presence on the edge for a team that their one bright spot has been defending the run and to have another body in that group, another 270 pound player like a Jalen Phillips, who's dramatically improved this year against the run to have that set on both sides. And you got Emmanuel Akba back this past week from a back injury and he's at his best when he's kind of reduced inside shade on offensive tackles anyway. So that it, it gives you a really, really formidable front five to be able to work with and with the, the issues that you have with the secondary, I would imagine you're probably going to see them play a little bit more four-man front. Three linebackers get Duke Riley more snaps as a linebacker who can actually play in coverage and then play some more uh, four-man defensive back sets. And that ability and confidence to win up front against both the run and the pass keeps that floor against the run, which has been one of the stabilizing pieces of the defense but again, from a ceiling perspective and that organic pass rush, I mean, he, he's winning 25% uh, of defeating 25% of his blocks in less than two and a half seconds. And for Miami, the last three weeks, Jalen Phillips has bested the NFL average, according to next gen stats of 4.35 yards within the quarterback. Uh, at the time of the release of the ball, but no other Dolphins defender over the last three weeks has bested NFL average once. So having wow. another player who can defeat blocks quickly I mean, you, you think about those two height, weight, speed type athletes off the edge. And I certainly think it raises the expectation that we're going to be able to play zone and play seven guys in coverage. And we're still going to create more pressures, force more mistakes. And the lack of turnovers has been the biggest issue for this Dolphins defense because they've lived off turnovers the last two seasons. Well, they went four games, five games with one turnover across five games already this season. So you get those turnovers back magically, you're starting field positions better, you get more explosive plays, more point opportunities, and that'll all snowball from there. 
it's not quite this simple because of the picks involved, but the Trey Lance haul with the three first round picks and then the picks going out to get you Waddle, Hill, and Chubb. How do you view now that we've essentially closed the book on, on at least the players and people involved in the trade? How do you view that original move and what it's netted the team? Yeah, you, you can't help but feel really excited about the net and return, right? And, and really the only player who was uh, a bet was the Jalen Waddle selection because the other two players that are coming in have an established NFL resume. Now, you're going to pay for it, but this was, this was this goes all the way back to 2019 when the Dolphins promoted Chris Greer. They relieved Mike Tannenbaum of his duties as the, the VP of the president of football operations or whatever his title was. And Greer became the guy in control. And they stripped down all the bad contracts, the Robert Quinns, the Ryan Tannehills, the um, Kenny Stills, all these players that, that they had this mass exodus. And it was to build up salary cap space and draft selections, build through the draft have a young nucleus of players on rookie contracts so that as this maturation of this team and this rebuild takes place, you are in a position where you can pay established players. And, and, you know, they played the law of averages in the NFL draft and they haven't hit every single draft selection that they've made out of the park. But as you've identified what areas you have and have not had success with, it makes it so much easier to to swallow the pill to say, we are going to send a one and a four for Bradley Chubb at the trade deadline because you're five and three, you're really well positioned to make a playoff run here. And you're going to have this player with an opportunity to extend him and make him a long-term piece as a 26 year old pass rusher. Who's been very, very effective rushing the passer. So uh, that Trey Lance pick too, you, you expand it back and it's one of the pieces of the Laramie Tunsil trade. So as fun as the Trey Lance deal is, if you go back even further and look at everything they got with Laramie Tunsil with the two ones and the twos, and it is just an astronomical haul. And I don't think this Dolphins rebuild is anywhere near where we see it now without that Laramie Tunsil deal that they kicked for more picks down the road from here. And they, they, they will still have at the very end, a third round pick from San Francisco, this upcoming draft to be the final piece of that Laramie Tunsil trade when it's all said and done. I know this is not the part of the day that's going to make the headlines, but Miami did replace Chase Edmonds, who goes out as part of this set of transactions with Jeff Wilson. As I mentioned, reuniting with Mike McDaniel, they were together in San Francisco. What is the appeal of making this swap for Miami? Well, Edmonds was a player who the team seemed to be pretty willing to bet on. They, they gave him a pretty substantial contract in the offseason. Um, looked like throughout training camp and preseason and the first week against New England, he scored two touchdowns, I believe. Like, he looked like he was going to be the guy. But he struggled with drops. He's leading the team in drops, and he's supposed to be somebody who's really effective as a pass catcher out of the backfield. The drop-off from Mostert, to Edmonds in the running game has been startling. Mostert, you know, averaging a healthy four and a half yards per clip or so. I mean, Mostert was barely over three yards per carry, uh, or Edmonds was was barely over three yards per carry. And um, to have somebody that can come in that knows the system, knows the calls, know how Coach McDaniel wants you to read your gaps. Um, you go back to the Sunday night game on the fourth down decision, the controversial decision to skip on the field goal, and instead go go for it on fourth and short. Chase Edmonds cuts that that run back into the teeth of the defense. When if you went back and looked at the RPO, if he would have just pressed to the play side, he probably would have got the boundary and at the very least got a first down. So it's some misreads there, drops in the passing game that's been very frustrating for Chase Edmonds. And I'm sure that they love that they were able to parlay, get the rest of the Edmonds contract that they gave off the books with him struggling as much as he is, and then go get a guy that you know exactly what you're going to get and is going to execute the way that you want him to. A lot going on in Miami. It is appropriate that in South Beach, we have a bunch of stars. We have Kyle there as well, helping us out with everything going on with the Miami Dolphins. Check him out wherever you get podcasts. Check out Locked On NFL on YouTube and wherever you get podcasts. And of course, check out Locked On Sports today. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Peter.